Welcome to the Transform My Dance Studio podcast, powered by the Dance Studio Owners Association. My name is Lisa DeMeo, and I am the Inner Circle Program Coordinator. Over the next six weeks, we are thrilled to be welcoming the one and only Hilary Parnell as our guest host for our brand new series, The Empire Formula. Hilary is one of the studio growth coaches inside the Inner Circle, the owner of Academy for the Performing Arts in North Carolina, and the owner and founder of Dance Photo Pro. This very special series will give you an inside look into how Hillary has grown her dance studio into an empire as she shares her strategies that will help you unleash your inner CEO. In this season, Hillary will be diving into measuring and managing your success, limiting beliefs and grand gestures, letting go of the day-to-day, debunking delegation myths, and so much more. If you're looking for resources and support to grow the dance studio of your dreams, make sure to join us in the Dance Studio Owners Association. It's completely free and filled with industry-leading tools that will empower you to grow your studio and reclaim your life. Join us today at dsoa.com forward slash join. We hope you enjoy the Empire Formula with Hillary Parnell. Hey, hey, everyone. We are back for another episode of the Empire Formula series on the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. I'm Hillary Parnell, and I'm back to give you another dose of tough love today. I warned you at the beginning of this series that we were going to level up. We're not going to talk about marketing systems or tips on bookkeeping or time management tools. You can literally Google those. You can get those kinds of things from a program like the Inner Circle, or maybe you already have them and you're just not using them. Today, we're going to go deeper. We're going to get to the root of what might be holding you back from reaching your fullest, most awesome potential. What might be stopping you from achieving your version of success and true happiness. Already on this series in the past three episodes, we've covered the real reason you might be stuck in overwhelm, no matter how many to-do lists you make or how many time management books you read. We've talked about leadership And why, despite your best efforts to delegate, you still feel like you're always constantly putting out fires and you are still shackled to your business. And we've talked about ways to incentivize, motivate, and empower your staff to work towards a common goal and alleviate some of the workload, stress, and mental load from you. Today, we're going to dive deep into some topics that might be a little taboo, some unpopular opinions, if you will. Some things that maybe you don't quite understand right away, but maybe feel immediately opposed to instead. (laughs) But my hope is that I can change your mind. I hope that you can see another point of view and then eventually change your opinion on these subjects. So my three unpopular opinions are big, bold statements, and I'm going to tell them to you now, and then we're going to dive into each one of them. My first bold statement is competition is beneficial to your business in every way. And now I'm not talking about dance competitions. I'm talking about competition in business. So the dance studio that moves in across the street uh, or soccer in your town that is taking all of the kids away. (laughs) Competition is beneficial to your business in every way. Let that one sink in. Bold statement number two, negative reviews are one of the best things that can happen to your business. Agree or disagree. And number three, every customer issue is an opportunity to be awesome. Now, I feel like there are probably two sorts of studio owners listening to this right now. The first kind is thinking, nope, you're crazy. I feel sick to my stomach if I get a bad review. I do everything in my power to never have anything go wrong for my customers. And if another dance studio opened up down the street, I might as well just close my doors and pack it in because there could be nothing worse in the whole wide world. Anyone out there feel like that? Like you're just balancing daily on the edge of misery, afraid to answer the phone because you know it's going to be another mom complaining about something and you just can't deal with it anymore. Have you ever gotten a one-star Facebook review and panicked thinking no one would ever come to your studio again? What about those of you who have had a new studio open literally across the street and poach your students or steal your advertising or their website looks exactly like yours, only better because it's new? Do you feel the weight of that in the pit of your stomach? Yeah. I talk to a lot of studio owners who feel like that. You are not alone. 
But then there's also probably the second type of studio owner who is proud to say that maybe they're a little more progressive. They're like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, Hillary. You're right. It is good when I get a bad Facebook review and I love it when our competition steals our post ideas. Yeah, dealing with those crazy moms is the favorite part of my day. Sure. (laughs) But you type twos out there, although I hear you saying the right thing, many of you might be lying to yourselves because here's what I also hear. Yes, Hillary, I know competition breeds excellence and it's going to make me better but I still wish they would stop using my ad copy because I paid a lot of money for that. Or I hear you, Hillary, every problem is an opportunity, but why won't people just read their emails? (laughs) It's like you want to agree with me, but at the end of the day, you still feel the weight in the pit of your stomach when the phone rings and you'd be really irritated if another dance studio actually moved in across the street. So if you're part of the type two crowd, you're a step in the right direction but I'm going to convince you even more so you can really lean into this thought process. And if you're part of the type one crew, bear with me. I promise this will make more sense by the end of this episode. Trust me on this one. So let's talk about unpopular opinion. Number one, competition is beneficial to your business in every way. Yes. I'm sure you've heard the saying that competition breeds excellence. It is true. That's it. This is not extremely deep. If you exist in your small town, and even if you do an excellent job, I can almost guarantee that you will still gain students when another dance studio opens in that same small town. The sheer fact that there's a new studio will get people talking about dance. Some people will look up dance studios online. Others will ask their friends. But either way, your audience just increased. And your presence is already well-established. Dance is good in the community, in any way, shape, or form. We all felt the uptick when So You Think You Can Dance started, when shows like that or uh, Dancing with the Stars or even TikTok, dance is in people's heads, which makes dancers come to our studios. And if you never worry about another studio potentially taking your students, you can get really comfortable with the way you do things. You might think that that floor doesn't need to be replaced and that per paper registration works just fine and that your 1989 Debbie Gibson choreography can be just recycled into a new Taylor Swift montage and no one will notice. But what happens when that new studio opens up with shiny new floors, online registration, and guest choreographers from So You Think You Can Dance? You're going to step up your game. You're going to get better and people will notice. Your current already diehard customers will be even happier and they're your best form of advertisement. They're going to tell their friends. Well, what if a new studio shows up and they start poaching your kids? I hear that a lot. So what? I know it feels like a personal attack. I know that you raised those kids. You poured your heart into them. You would do anything for them, right? Well, kind of your bad because either they don't know that or they just don't care. If they don't care and they don't care to stay with you, why are you losing sleep over them? Let them go. To them, it's just business. How many times have you swapped cable companies or cell phone carriers because you just got a better deal? The grass always seems greener. And the only way for them to know for sure is to go test it out. And here's the thing. Thank that other studio. They just cleaned house for you. They just walked in and plucked away the kids that are not your ideal customers. And one of three things is going to happen from this point forward. Number one, they're going to realize they were wrong and they're going to come back. This is a win-win because you look like the bigger person. You didn't have to do anything but continue to be awesome. And when they come back, it's going to say a lot to those people who chose to stay in the first place. Boom. You look amazing. The second thing that could happen is that they don't come back. And that's good too. They found what they were looking for and maybe it wasn't you. Don't take it personally. Be true to yourself and your values and accept the fact that you absolutely cannot please everyone. If they had stayed, they would have continued to be unhappy and spread their negativity like a virus. Those dancers are toxic 
and way worse to your business if they stay. Or the third thing that can happen in this situation is that you realize that something is not clicking the way with the way you are running your business. You learn a lesson. You make changes and you move forward even stronger than ever before. Let's say you lose a bunch of kids because they think they can get more elite training at another school. If you prefer to be more of a recreational studio, then great. They found their fit and everyone can move forward better off. But let's say, actually, this is a hard pill to swallow for you. Let's say you you think you're offering an elite level training program. And for some people, for some reason, people just aren't getting it. They're still leaving. If they're still leaving and thinking that that studio across town is able to offer them something that you can't, then you need to reflect on this. This is information. You think you're offering something that they're not receiving. What's going wrong? Why aren't they getting it? Is your training not as good as you think it is? Are you communicating your objectives to you, uh, and your training philosophy to your parents? Do they understand your values and what's important to you? Maybe you have some work to do. Maybe you need to make sure that you're providing what you think you're providing. Take advantage of the message they're sending you, make the changes, get better, and assume that the next group of kids that might look elsewhere will now stay because you're providing what you think you're providing. What if that new studio, here's another one. What if that new studio is stealing your ideas, your events, your marketing, your social media posts? It, it feels bad, right? But so what? Make new ones. Stay one step ahead of them. I know that sounds harsh. And again, tough love by Hillary. But in the amount of time you can sulk, complain, talk about it with everyone who will listen and play the victim, you could have come up with a totally new and amazing campaign. That's life. It will force you to stay fresh evolve, keep things new and exciting for your customers. It's really not that big of a deal. It's it's how businesses run. Think about any large kind of company. Competitors are constantly one-upping each other. Don't dwell, move forward. And think about this. If you know your core values and you're crystal clear on your why and provide an excellent customer experience, You could technically have the exact same marketing, picture for picture, word for word, and it wouldn't matter. Because on one hand, those messages won't make sense for them. If they're using your words and your images, they probably don't align with their studio, and it won't actually attract their ideal customers. On the other hand, if that messaging does align with their studio, and they are doing it better, then that's on you. That's another piece of information to help you get better. Go back, scrutinize your studio. Why are you really upset about this? It might be because your issues are being brought to light. It might hurt a little, but it's actually a good thing because now you know you need to fix something. Okay, our second bold statement. (laughs) Time for number two, that negative reviews are one of the best things that can happen for your business. I'm actually talking about two different kinds of negative feedback, right? The first kind is the kind you get on a public forum, like a Facebook page. You you get a one-star review and it's out there for the world to see. The other kind is the kind you ask for in a survey or feedback form. Let's talk about the easy kind first, the feedback form. I know so many people who are actually scared to death of hearing anything negative that they never ask. They feel personally attacked if anyone has anything negative to say, and they physically cannot ask for feedback. They are paralyzed. If this is you, I want you to think really hard about this. Think about it this way. Do you believe that you need to give your dancers feedback in order for them to improve? Of course you do. Imagine what it would look like if dancers came to class for 10 years and never received any sort of critique or feedback. That sounds absurd. But that's what's happening if you never seek out constructive criticism. You are assuming you're doing everything right. And what you're not realizing is that people are leaving without you ever even knowing why. Oftentimes, something simple that you could have fixed. And if you think people aren't leaving, you're kidding yourself. Even if you have 100 students 
you could have 200. Even if you have a thousand students, you could probably have 2000. If they're quietly frustrated with something, again, something you could probably fix easily and they just leave, you never know what that thing is and you don't fix it. So let's say 10, 20, or even a hundred people are frustrated with the same thing and leave. You could have fixed that thing with, if you had asked the very first person why they were frustrated, and then you could have saved 10 or 20 or a hundred students. So do the survey, find out the truth. You can do it. And if you're still really reluctant because of that nauseous feeling you get when you read the feedback, just have someone else open the results and kind of coordinate the information to give it back to you. It takes the sting out. Have them read through everything, put together a summary of the things that more than three people said. Um, There's always going to be weird outliers, and maybe those people are not your ideal customers. But if 10, 20 people are saying the same thing about a certain teacher or the lobby or how you run your schedule, maybe that's something that's worth looking into. Remember, it's not personal. It's just business. Now, what about a public review? Like someone gives you that one star on Facebook. First of all, take a deep breath. It's okay. Then I want you to Google any large company on the planet. Google your favorite company, one that you love that makes a ton of money and in your eyes can do no wrong. I guarantee they have a one-star review, probably lots of them. Kind of puts it in perspective, doesn't it? Your business is not going to crumble because of one one one-star review. Just wait 24 hours, take a deep breath, respond with a nice, cordial, civil note, and never think about it again. In most people's eyes, you will appear to be the bigger person, and anyone who happens to agree with the angry person probably isn't your ideal customer anyway. Don't lose sleep over it. And finally, our number three bold statement of the day, every customer issue is an opportunity to be awesome. At face value, I bet most of you would agree with that statement. Sure, something gets messed up, you fix it, you look great, and everyone's happy. But I don't just want you to agree with it. I want you to believe it because believing it makes a difference in your mindset. If you only agree that issues equal opportunity, then you might still get a little sick to your stomach when you check your email. You still would prefer no one ever has an issue. (laughs) You still secretly wish that every one of your customers was blown away with what you already offer and you never have to fix anything ever. But if you genuinely in your heart of hearts believe that issues can be opportunities, then you will be excited when an email comes through of something that you messed up. So let's say someone's costume doesn't come in. You get an email of a angry mom, and she is just livid that her costume is not going to be here for pictures. What can you do? You can get sick to your stomach or let me call you on my personal line. I'm going to chat with you for like 10 minutes about your precious angel. I'm going to apologize profusely. I'm going to get off the phone, but email you immediately a Starbucks gift card for your troubles. Then when that costume comes in, I'm going to steam it, put it in a bag, tie a bow on it, add some balloons, and I'm going to deliver it directly to your house dressed as our mascot. Maybe a bit extreme, but what part of that story do you think people are going to tell their friends? It's not going to be, oh my gosh, they are so disorganized. Susie's little costume didn't come in and she was crushed. I'm never going there again. No, it's going to be, oh my gosh, the owner felt so bad that Susie's costume wasn't coming in, that she went to all of this trouble. She, they're, they're so amazing. And look at these amazing pictures of the mascot in my kitchen. Right? Totally different story. It's almost a good thing that that costume didn't come in on time. Because now she's a way bigger fan than she was if everything had gone normally. Maybe you get an email that says the teacher didn't start class on time or they warm up too much or something like that. Okay. Thank you so much for your feedback. We have a monthly training for our staff and one of our core values is punctuality. We're going to review it at length the next time we meet. 
And then you can even email next month and say, because of your feedback, I wanted to give you some more information. We've actually initiated a bonus program for all of our teachers to make sure that they're in the building 15 minutes before their classes start so that they have time to get things situated. I really appreciate your willingness to share this with me. Enjoy this coffee on me. And my door is always open. Amazing customers like you help make our studio better every day, (laughs) right? Die hard fan. If you can adjust your mindset on this one thing, you will get so excited when an issue comes through instead of feeling like, oh no, I can't deal with this today. You're going to feel like, heck yeah, bring it on. Watch me shine. This is what I do. Let's do this. So how does that feel to you? (laughs) A little scary? A little icky, maybe. Yeah, it will at first, but it just takes practice. If you can start making a habit of thinking about it just a little differently, you'll see how nice it is to live in this mindset. The mindset of opportunity is so much more freeing and positive than the mindset of fear. You'll be less stressed. You'll sleep soundly at night. You won't have that weird feeling in your stomach. And you're going to portray yourself in your business as a strong, confident leader who can handle anything. The alternative can seem like you're scared, petty, and not confident in what you're offering. And we definitely don't want that. So, okay, fun episode. I want you to try some of these tactics. I want you to really look for feedback and be willing to to hear it and make changes and reflect on what you can do better in your business. It's only going to make you stronger. And hopefully by now you agree just a little bit more that competition is beneficial, that feedback is great, and that issues are always an opportunity. I'm Hillary Parnell, and this has been the Empire Formula on the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. See you next time. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Empire Formula on the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. If you are ready to take your studio to the next level and work more closely with Hillary and our industry leading team of studio growth coaches, make sure to join our inner circle waitlist today at dsoa.com forward slash inner circle. You can also join us for free inside the Dance Studio Owners Association, where we have everything you need to grow your studio and reclaim your life. Join us today at dsoa.com forward slash join. And finally, Don't forget to rate and review this podcast. These simple things allow us to continue bringing you world-class hosts and guests every Monday right here on the Transform My Dance Studio podcast.